Time now for Michigan's number one outdoor radio show, Mike Avery's Outdoor Magazine. Outdoor Magazine is brought to you by Jay's Sporting Goods, the Yider Insurance Group, Forward Corporation and T.R. McTaggart, Angler Quest Boats, Security Credit Union, Garber Chevrolet, and by Michigan Brand Meats. Now, here's Mike Avery. Indeed, this is the big guy, Mike Avery, and welcome to our number two of this week's Outdoor Magazine show right here on the Outdoor Magazine radio network, 30 stations across the great state of Michigan that carry the uh, Outdoor Magazine show. The goal of this show is very simple. It's a celebration of the outdoor lifestyle here in the great state of Michigan, comma, and occasionally beyond. Uh, Hunting, fishing, shooting, trapping, all things that are just so much fun, biologically sound, biologically necessary, ordained by God, and just fun. I mean, what, what more do you want? Now, I say Outdoor Magazine radio show. Uh, the, the, the lines are blurred these days between a radio show and a podcast. Everybody talks about podcasting, podcasting, podcasting. And I love podcasting, and I have a bunch of podcasts. But this show that you are listening to now on your local station, and I think that's the best way to listen if you can, on your local AM or FM radio station, because there you can get your local news, weather, sports. Maybe there's a, a local promotion, something you want to take advantage of. Uh, but if your local affiliate doesn't carry all three hours of the show, or if you live in some part of our state not covered by the broadcast signal of the Outdoor Magazine radio show, you can listen to the podcast version of the show. And it's nothing more than the audio from the radio show made available <laughs> anywhere other than on your local radio station. And there are tons of places you can listen. I would send you first to the website, MikeAveryOutdoors.com. You can hear the podcast there. And it's kind of a clearinghouse for all things Outdoor Magazine, Radio, and Mike Avery Outdoors. I also put it on my uh, Facebook feed, my Facebook page. The podcast is now up on Amazon Music. I put it on my Twitter feed as well, on LinkedIn. You can go directly to iTunes, directly to Google Play. It's on uh, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, Radio.com. Really, any place you get your podcasts from, you can hear the podcast version of the Outdoor Magazine radio show. In addition, I do monthly podcasts for Jay's Sporting Goods, Offshore Tackle, Angler Quest Boats, Killer Food Plots, Polar Craft Boats, uh, quarterly for uh, MUCC. And next year, actually next month now, we're starting another monthly podcast for a company that I'm not willing to divulge or name quite yet, but stay tuned. Details coming soon. Regardless of whether it's podcasting or broadcasting, uh, one of the things I enjoy most is talking with interesting people. And boy, have we got an interesting guy coming up for you now. His name is Gabe Van Warmer. You know the name. You probably know Gabe. He's been around the outdoor scene here in Michigan for many years. He's a field producer for Fishing 411 TV. He's a field producer for Michigan Out of Doors Television. He is an avid and expert angler, an avid and expert hunter, and he's with us now on the Outdoor Magazine phone line. Gabe, welcome back. How are you? Thanks for having me, Mike. Good to be here. Always a pleasure to have you along with us, my friend. And you've had a very uh, (laughs) productive fall so far, haven't you? (laughs) I'm just trying to keep up with my kids. That's all I'm trying to do. Well, good luck with that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, Tell me about your season. Tell me about your fall. You've had some great fishing and some great uh, hunting as well. Yeah, I've been doing a little bit of everything. Uh, Once bow season starts, boy, I don't do much other than bow hunting. Uh, Took a couple does early. Um, I've had some really good hunts, but it's been kind of slow for bucks. I've been looking for some nice ones, and I've been seeing them, but, you know, just haven't got them yet. And uh, done some uh, uh, some fishing in between there, and then also uh, went out to Kansas and hunted out there for a little while. And meanwhile, while I was out in Kansas, my wife took my kids up north, and they went to deer camp. And uh, my my son ended up shooting a 130 inch buck, and, <laughs> and uh, and for some reason he thought he was going to try to do my job for me, and he videotaped it. So oh <laughs> my goodness, that is outstanding, Gabe. 
kid's 14 years old and he's uh he's taking my job already <laughs> <laughs> well that that's that, that that's your retirement right there <laughs> exactly exactly if they'll share it with me. <laughs> uh, well uh, so and, and you know you talk about well, i took a couple of does early but but you do it the hard way gabe and it's one of the things i one of the reasons i have so much respect for you is you're a traditional archer i mean you're shooting them yes, not even with a reeker but with a with a long bow and i think that is so cool i have yet to kill a deer with my recurve and anybody can do it anybody who can do it on a consistent basis like you i have much respect for it's tough. It is. It's very rewarding, though, when you get one. That's for sure. Mm. I enjoy it. Um, and now we go into rifle season. Uh, you're not afraid to hunt with a rifle at all, but you've done a lot of uh, handgun hunting, which I think is very cool as well. Yeah. Tell me more about that. Man, I got into that probably, oh, 20 years ago. I met uh, Larry Kelly from Magnaport and his son, Ken, uh, who's a master gunsmith, and these guys are excellent, excellent handgunners. And, and Larry took the big five over in Africa with a handgun. And I mean, one of the pioneers and I learned from him and, uh, and Ken. And, uh, since then I've been, I, I've just loved it. It's, it's basically like bow hunting during rifle season. I mean, you have to have them pretty close. You have to, you have to watch how much caffeine you have in the morning because <laughs> you get the jitters and <laughs> it's, it's really tough to, to keep, if you've never handgun hunted, it's, it's, it makes it a challenge to hold that gun steady when a deer's coming in. It's a lot easier to shoulder a weapon and uh, and fire it that way than it is to try to hold it out in front of you against a tree or something. And uh, it's it's just a challenging thing to do. And I, I really really enjoy it. And I've become addicted to to like custom guns and uh, <laughs> revolvers and TC contenders and encores. And I just love it. It's, it's a riot. What uh, what do you figure your range is uh, on a white tail with a handgun? Uh, you know, if I have a good rest, um, a lot of times I will set up a tree uh, with a couple of bow hangers on the tree. I, I'll put two or three bow hangers on the tree at different levels and different spots on the tree so that I can rest the gun against the tree and on the frame. Uh, and, and that being said, if I if I have no wind and everything is perfect, um, 200 yards, 200, wow. sorry, I'm sorry, one, 100 yards, Still. 125 yards, you know, I'm shooting like two power scope. So if it's anything beyond that, boy, that scope really covers up about the whole animal. So it's, it makes it a little more difficult at longer ranges. I'm not into the net cartridges because I hunt down here in Southern Michigan, but you can go even longer than that. I know I have friends that have, uh, have killed deer out to 200 yards with handguns with very specialized handguns. But, uh, those guys are experts. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm just an amateur having fun with it. And, uh, those, those guys are like pros. <laughs> Man, Gabe, Gabe, you don't do anything the easy way. You 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 pick the hard way all the way around. <laughs> well, I do like rifles too. I do enjoy that, and uh, you know my kids enjoy that as well. So, but but I do. Yeah, handgun hunting is fun to me. It is very fun. It's challenging. You why know? why why the revolvers? Why not a semi-auto? What's what's the thinking there? Uh, actually, I, I would love to get into a semi-auto. I have not done that yet, and that's one thing that I'd like to do. Uh, the reason I got into revolvers is I just like the look of them. Ah. Um, a, a nice big frame revolver is just a it's just a pretty sight in my mind. Um, so really, really had nothing to do with anything other than cosmetics, and that's what looked cool to me. So I started out that way, and then uh, a couple of friends got me into uh, a Thompson Center contender and said you'd really like that. And, I went down that rabbit hole for a little while and enjoyed, and I have enjoyed it. So I've got a Thompson Center Contender, an Encore, you know, and then several revolvers. So, yeah, yeah, that's the only reason. I, I would love to start into a, 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 that's the kind of the next thing is an automatic setting one up to hunt with. So, Well, it's just one more thing to spend your money on, Gabe. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'll be up at Jay's. <laughs> they, they, pre they print more every day. <laughs> Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, and and another thing you're you're doing, and I I, I saw you on uh, Instagram. By the way, folks can follow you um, on Instagram as Gabe Van Wormer and on YouTube as uh, Full Quiver Outdoors. Am I correct on both of those, Gabe? That is correct. Yep. Okay. You were doing on Instagram. I saw you were doing some um, some testing of those straight walled cartridges you were talking about. I know you had the 450, and I think you might have had a 350 Legend out there as well. Yeah, yeah, I've got a, I've got several of both in the 450. I've got an AR, a break open gun, and also a custom bolt gun. So I've got a wide variety there. With the 350, I have a uh, an AR um, and a break open gun, and I have not got a bolt gun yet. But I, I also I'm 
I'm planning on having one built this this winter, so I will have a bolt gun as well. But yeah, I I, I love testing guns. I'm kind of a gun geek as far as you know on the on a small scale. I don't reload, but other than that, I I love I love shooting with guns. Well, and the cool thing about the 350 and 450 this year, especially, is coming up here in uh, muzzleloader season in the southern part of the state. You can use those now in what used to be called yeah. the muzzleloader season. Yeah, absolutely. Gives you another opportunity and uh, and a very good opportunity at that. Yeah. And and I've actually never hunted with either one of those. The the thinking there is, I mean, what what's the range on something like that? I know if I put it in the hands of a guy like uh, my friend Paul Phillips, the extreme long range shooter, he can probably shoot six hundred yards with him. But the average yeah. person, what are they going to shoot with? The average person is kind of a two hundred yard gun. Either one of them. Either mm-hmm. one are very good out to two hundred yards. The three fifty, you'll have to do a little more testing with just to make sure that the load you're using will go you know 200 yards without an extreme drop because if you if you shoot something like say in uh you know 180 grain powerpoint or something like that you're going to have a little more drop than you will with a 150 grain so you really want to make sure you do your homework don't just look at the thing on the back of the box and go oh i think i can do that you know actually shoot the gun and make sure you're doing that and, and the numbers are lining up for you but yeah 200 yards is pretty easy we're talking with uh, Gabe Van Warmer here on the uh, Outdoor Magazine radio show. Uh, you can learn more about Gabe on Instagram. You can follow him on Instagram as Gabe Van Warmer, as I do. And uh, on YouTube, he's Full Quiver Outdoors. He's a, a video guy, uh, an avid hunter, an avid angler, an expert. And seems to me just about everything he touches, he excels at. And uh, just an all-around good guy and an interesting guy to talk with. Uh, We'll take a break here in the Outdoor Magazine show. When we come back, wrap up our conversation with Gabe talking about late-season hunting and probably some fishing as well right here on Outdoor Magazine. By now, you know all about Angler Quest boats, the center console design, binary wall system, and smooth ride with lots of room have anglers convinced a pontoon can be a great fishing rig. And the folks at Michigan-based Angler Quest continue to make their boats even better. Now the signature rocket launcher arch can tilt down. That's great for high water levels, trailering, and storage. Also, there's a new panfish model that's perfect for smaller inland lakes. The popular Pro Troll models continue to dominate big water for walleye, salmon, and trout, and the family fish can keep everyone happy, whether fishing or cruising. All Angler Quest boats are designed by fishermen and made in Michigan by skilled craftsmen using the latest technology. You can learn more online at anglerquestpontoons.com. That's anglerquestpontoons.com. With more models, upgraded designs, plenty of features, and bigger outboards, this is the perfect year for you to join the Angler Quest family. At Garber Chevrolet in Midland, Saginaw, Linwood, Caro, and now Chesney, we're better for a reason. Like Garber's low price guarantee, get incredible everyday low prices on a new Chevy Equinox, Silverado, Traverse, or Trax. Think you found a better deal somewhere else? Bring it to us, and we will beat it. Getting more options and choices is always better, and Garber's combined inventory is the Great Lakes Bay region's largest selection of new Chevrolets. Browse online at GarberChevrolet.com. Then use our buy from home feature to purchase entirely online. And Garber Chevrolet's customer service is in a class of its own. We always put your needs first. Better prices, better selection. There's a reason why you'll do better at Garber Chevrolet in Midland, Saginaw, Linwood, Caro, and now Chesney. Home with a low price guarantee. Online at GarberChevrolet.com. Chevy, find new roads. You'll do better at Garber. Everybody needs to put gas in their tank, so the next time, why not save money with Fuel Rewards from Forward Shell Convenience Stores? With Fuel Rewards, you'll save at least five cents a gallon on every fill-up at the 26 Forward Shell Convenience Stores. Plus, you can earn additional savings with select products and special offers at those Forward Stores. You can save 20, 30, even 40 cents a gallon, and the more you use Fuel Rewards, the more you can save. 
I use the Fuel Rewards program every time I stop by a Forward Shell convenience store. And you can too. Go to FuelRewards.com. That's FuelRewards.com. You can also download the Fuel Rewards app on your phone. The Fuel Rewards program at your local Forward Shell convenience store. A great way to save money every time you fill up. To learn more, check out ForwardConvenience.com. That's ForwardConvenience.com. 20 feet in the air is no time to be second-guessing your choice in tree stands. But with the new Primal line of stands, you'll never have to worry about comfort or noise. Primal's new jaw and truss ladder system gives you an extra firm and quiet attachment, even on irregular trees. The Primal Grip Jaw System features a strong set of jaws so you can securely clamp around the tree. The Backbone Stabilizer Truss lets you connect to almost any healthy tree and eliminates annoying squeaks. With single ladder stands from 16 to 22 feet and double stands up to 18 feet, new Primal Tree Stands have a model for every hunter. To learn more, check out the website PrimalTreeStands.com. That's PrimalTreeStands.com. Stock your prey the Primal way with Primal Tree Stands. You can hear the Outdoor Magazine show in Tawas on WIOS AM and FM, 1480 AM, 106.9 FM. You can hear us in Sandusky and WMIC at 660 AM. And you can hear us north of the bridge in Marquette on WDMJ, 1320 AM. This segment of Outdoor Magazine is brought to you by Great Lakes Charter Training. If you've ever wanted to be a charter captain, I am absolutely convinced this is the single best option. Because they guarantee you will pass your Coast Guard captain's license exam. And it is no easy task. I could not have got my captain's license had I not gone with Great Lakes Charter Training. Captain Mel Stackpool, Captain John Littlefield did an absolutely great job. There are classes now uh, throughout the state across the winter months. And what a great time of year to do this. If you want to be a charter captain, a fishing charter captain, a dive boat captain, a sailing captain, a sightseeing tour, excursions, a tow boat captain. If you're going to be on the water for hire, if you're going to be taking people on your boat, you need to be licensed. I got licensed through Captain Mel Stackpool and Great Lakes Charter Training, and I can't speak highly enough about them. The website, glctraining.com. That's glctraining.com. We're talking now on the Outdoor Magazine show with Gabe Van Warmer. Uh, Gabe is an avid hunter, an avid angler, an expert videographer. He works with uh, Mark Romanek on the Fishing 411 TV show. He works with the folks over at Michigan Outdoors uh, TV as well. You can follow Gabe on Instagram. He is Gabe Van Warmer on Instagram. And on YouTube, uh, he is Full Quiver Outdoors. Uh, Gabe, you said you went out to uh, Kansas. Uh, Man, I've had some great experiences in Kansas. How was your hunt this fall? Yeah, it was wonderful. Um, being I hunt with that longbow, it was it was not successful, but that's the first time uh, in nine years that I've come back with a tag. So, it but we saw plenty of big bucks. I think we were out there for nine days. Um, it was a good long hunt and uh, had had lots of animals uh, close, but no cigar. <laughs> Man, it so. takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of commitment to take a, a trip like that. <laughs> and 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 take your your longbow. I mean that's uh, that's pretty impressive. Well, I'll admit the first couple of years I did not do that. You know, the first few years that I went with a longbow uh, here in Michigan, I went out there with a compound. And uh, after the first couple times I shot a deer, I think I think the first two deer I shot like that um, were at like 15 yards and 17 yards or something. And I thought, you know what? Why? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I could do that with a longbow. And yeah. Yeah, it's probably cost me. I had a I had a really nice ten point at about twenty five yards. Got awesome video of him and everything, but just didn't feel comfortable with it. So it happens. But you know what? That's a successful trip for me. I mean, it was just the experience of being out there is is unbelievable. So that's worth it to me. What about back here in Michigan? Uh, the late season coming up now. The deer have been hunted hard now for weeks and weeks. They've just come through a two week uh, firearm season. The Orange Army has been out there. 
<laughs> you know, what, what's your advice for late season hunters? It's a whole different ball game at this point, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, uh, I, I kind of look at the pressure and where the pressure has been. Um, if you have an opportunity to hunt a big piece of property, private or something, or, or get in really deep on that public land, um, that's the, that's the key is to just try to figure out where they've been pressured to. I mean, I, using trail cameras to figure that out will help. Um, I, I live down here in Southern Michigan, a lot of times I go through the gun season using a, a, a revolver or handgun and stuff. And then I switch to a rifle to fill the freezer with a couple of does or something. And, you know, just to be able to reach out there because those deer are skittish. And if they come in at, you know, 200, 250 yards, I can still, I can still poke them. So, you know, that maybe that's the key is, you know, in Southern Michigan is maybe switch it up to one of these rifles and, and you might have a little more success in those open areas. You talked about uh, trail cameras. Um, they have really changed the way people scout and even hunt deer, haven't they? Absolutely. Absolutely. I I use mine, you know, almost year round. I mean, I use them for turkeys where, you know, I'll set them in a, in a, in a field where I, I want to take a look at, but I don't want to take the, the morning to sit there and look at it, you know, and I'll, I'll use it in uh in the January, February months to see what bucks made it through, you know, and, and when they start losing their antlers, you know, I want to, I want to shed hunt as well. So I want to know when they start losing their antlers. So yeah, I, I use them year round and, and for scouting, it's unbelievable, but you can't believe everything you see on trail cameras. I mean, just the other day I was sitting 10, 10 yards, 15 yards from one of my trail cameras. I probably saw 16, 17, 18 deer and only one of them came by the trail camera. So, <laughs> so sometimes you look at those and go, oh, I don't have any deer in my area. And then you get out there and you're like, oh, well, maybe I do. <laughs> so, yeah. Are yeah. you using the, the cell cameras? I have used it, yes. I've, I've got three of those now. And I will have to admit, it sure is nice not having to go into an area to go check a card. Um, you get instant feedback. Um, I... I don't necessarily use my trail cameras to figure out what's going by one particular stand. I'm more looking towards what is the movement in the area, what bucks are still around, has a new buck moved into the area, um, uh, especially in this late season. Coming up into muzzleloader season where some of these areas down here where you can still use the rifles, um, a lot of times in this late season, the second rut, you'll have a buck move in that you've never seen before. And I think that's a good scouting tool is to have a trail camera out there and to go, you know, all of a sudden he shows up and you know about it. So that's that's kind of the, one of the good things about trail cameras are, um, you know, if you have like two different properties to hunt and all of a sudden one shows up on one property, well, then, you know, I might want to concentrate on that property and not the other one. Gabe, I know you're uh, an avid, hardcore walleye angler as well. You spent so much time in the woods. You haven't been, it sounds like, down on Lake Erie or Saginaw Bay. And from what I'm hearing, uh, it's a good place to be right now. Two good places to be right now. Yeah, yeah. Lake St. Clair is another good oh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're really yeah. pounding them on Lake St. Clair. So, yeah, I, I, my poor boat, I, I, I go over and, and, I, and I pet her a little bit just to make sure she knows I still love her. Yeah, yeah. During, gun season, during deer season. But, uh yeah, that'll. I'll, I'll be getting out in the boat here shortly. Yeah, we're actually next week. We're heading down to Florida to do a crappie show. So, I'm going to get out of the cold for a little bit and then run down there, shoot that, and then come back up here and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully the Saginaw River and Saginaw Bay is heated up a little bit. I've been seeing some pretty good reports from there. So, yeah, I'm yeah. excited. I love late season walleye fishing. It's. Um... You know, I spend all summer out there on Saginaw Bay, and I absolutely yeah. love it. But I'm, you know, we're chasing small fish, large numbers of small fish, which I, I'm fine with. But yeah. man, I oh, can't yeah. imagine being out there this time of year and and targeting these fish either on Erie, St. Clair, or, or Saginaw Bay. You know, ten, eleven, maybe maybe bigger fish. I mean, it's it's a whole different. Oh, I should ask a question: Is it a whole different mindset than it is in the summertime? Yeah. I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. You got to slow down everything. Um, and when you slow down, you really can't cover water. So you really got to set up on fish. If you don't set up on fish, it might take you an hour to get to fish. So, you know, that going that, you know, one mile an hour, 1.1, 1.2, boy, if you don't use your electronics and find fish before you set up, finding fish while you're set up is, is very difficult. So it's a big mindset there. And, uh, and we are just spoiled in, in Michigan. We have such phenomenal fisheries that, 
you know, you catch a six, seven pounder and you're like, man, I wish it would be a little bit bigger. Yeah, and those guys out yeah. west are going, what in the world is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we are just spoiled here in Michigan to have those big fish. I've been seeing some pretty nice ones coming out of Saginaw Bay lately that I'm hoping that's heating up again for the big fish. So they're going to be coming in chasing shad, I'm assuming, and uh, pretty shortly here. And, and pretty shortly here, too, and you never know about ice fishing season. Are you much of an ice fisherman? I love ice fishing. I really enjoy it. it. It's a heavy editing season for me, so I don't get out as much as I would like to. But the last the last ice fishing season on Saginaw Bay, I believe, I believe we went out eight or nine times, and we never we never once came back without a limit, mm. which was amazing. And some jumbo perch too. So I mean, I I really enjoy that. That's a lot of fun, and my my kids are starting to enjoy it now too. Well, you know, I, I hear you talk about all these adventures. I hear you talk about your editing and such. I mean, looking at it from the outside, some people would say, man, Gabe Van Warmer, he's, he's got a dream job. And, and you have been blessed in a lot of ways, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I am not complaining about it. I got the best job in the world. And you, you, as someone who has done this for many years, understand it. But one, one thing people don't understand is, we get to sit around and watch people doing what we love to do. <laughs> so, so sometimes, I mean, it, yes, we're sitting on a boat in the middle of the summer, but you are watching somebody else do something that you enjoy doing. So it's not quite the same, but it is the same. I mean, I, I, I really enjoy it, and I wouldn't give it up for anything. But uh, some of those days, those long days where it's 90 degrees, no wind, and bugs like crazy, and you're sitting there not catching fish, it can get a little trying, or in the wind and rain and everything of, a, of, a, of an opener. You know, like this year, you know, it just, you know, you're going, maybe I should rethink this. And yeah, doing maybe, podcast maybe an radio. office job somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go, podcasting and radio, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that's one of the reasons I enjoy your Full Quiver Outdoors um, YouTube channel is because I get a chance to see you in action, you know, more than I normally would on Michigan Out of Doors or on Fishing 411. It seems like it's a great venue, a great outlet for you. It is fun. And I, you know, I carry a... My camera's almost attached to my right hand permanently. So, you know, if I'm going to be doing it, I might as well share it with people. And I, I especially the tra- traditional hunting, um, I love love hunting with a longbow and I love sharing it. So if there's any way to do that, you know, that I just take a camera with me every time I go. I'm used to it and it's no big deal anymore. And um, I, I love that. I love being able to share my outdoor adventures and it's fun. It, it is fun to be able to go, you know, hey, look at what happened this morning. So. Well, and we've talked about this before too. The, the the technology has evolved to the point where it's so much easier to share these stories, both from the perspective of capturing them, the the video images in the first place, and then having a, an outlet or a venue to share them. It's never been easier for people to share their outdoor creative pursuits than it is right now. Absolutely, and cheap. And I mean, cheap. you yes. can do a yes. full editing system and camera and everything for three, four thousand dollars. You can be into something. Well. Heck, I've got an iPhone that'll do all that, you know, and yeah. share it right from my iPhone. Yep. So, yep. you know, it really is very, very accessible to the average Joe. And, uh, you know, it, it might have, you know, some might argue that it's kind of watered down our sport a little bit. But I think, I think on the contrary, I mean, leading up to bow season, I don't know how many hunting videos I watched on YouTube. <laughs> it was a lot. <laughs> my wife would give me a hard time that I, oh, you haven't even watched a football game lately or a baseball game or anything. And. No, I'm busy watching hunting. Stuff. There you go. That's because that's that's who you are, and that's what you're all about, Gabe Van Warmer, uh, and an interesting guy, Gabe, and always a pleasure to talk with you, my friend. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me on. I really enjoy it. All right, Gabe, uh, check him out online on Instagram. You can follow him as I do on Instagram, Gabe Van Warmer, and check out his YouTube channel, Full Quiver Outdoors, on uh, YouTube. We'll take a break here in the Outdoor Magazine show. When we come back. Amy Trotter of MUCC, I thought we were going to have an update on the commercial fishing uh, legislation, but uh, now I'm not sure. We'll find out after the break right here on Outdoor Magazine. You can hear the Outdoor Magazine show in Cairo on WKYO, 1360 AM, and on WIDL, 92.1 FM. You can hear us in uh, Sheboygan on 
two more stations, Big Country Gold, WCBY, 1240 AM, 100.7 FM. And you can hear us, let's see, where should we go? Let's go to Lansing, WILS, 1320 AM. This segment of Outdoor Magazine brought to you by Speedy Blaze. Michigan-based Speedy Blaze is a safe, clean, water-resistant alternative to firewood. Uh, You can cook over it. It's insect-resistant. It's water-resistant. You can use it in your grill, your patio, your fireplace. Um, Anybody can start a fire with Speedy Blaze, and it's getting to be that time of year when a a good fire sounds nice, doesn't it? Check them out online at speedyblaze.com. That's speedyblaze.com. While you're online, of course, uh, check out my website, mikeavoryoutdoors.com, and head on over to mucc.org, mucc.org, the uh, website of the Michigan United Conservation Clubs, Amy Trotter, the executive director of that group, with us now on the Outdoor Magazine phone line. Amy, welcome back. How are you? Very good. Thanks, Mike. Always a pleasure to have you along with us. And uh, you, I never know what to ask because you have you, the organization, have your hands in so many different areas. So I'll just throw out an open-ended question. What's up? Well, um, it, lame duck uh, session has started, which is the legislative session after after the elections are done and after everybody knows if or uh, whether they're coming back the next session. So it's our last chance to get a lot of things done here before we have to kind of start over in 2021. So there's a lot of bills moving this week and unfortunately a uh, package of bills that we have been working on for a very long time um has uh slowed down so and that's the commercial fishing package Uh, Uh, there was supposed to be a meeting on wednesday and unfortunately that was canceled so uh yeah i was i was really hoping to get an update on that amy does does that mean (sighs) it's not good news that it was canceled does that mean that it's basically on hold till the next session um, not yet. So, you know, not, not all is lost, but um, I, it, what, what has happened is um, the Senate has gone through a iterative process of having a lot of hearings and um, the Senate chair, uh, Senator Ed McBroom from the Upper Peninsula has had a lot of individual uh, conversations with a lot of stakeholders. He's called, you know, working groups, basically. He wrote uh, up a, a big report about sort of his opinions and findings from all of those conversations that was just issued um, November 5th and he had committed that amendments would be following uh, according to some of the recommendations he uh, has made in his report. Unfortunately those amendments didn't show up until the Saturday after Thanksgiving at about six in the morning oh. <laughs> is when we all got them. <laughs> so uh, and the hearing was originally scheduled for um, Wednesday of this week and so there just simply wasn't enough time for a lot of us to really dive in because there is 130 amendments that he Uh. is proposing to the three bill package so it's a lot of things to take in but i can say right now taken together as a package um our sport fishing community and mucc does not support these amendments there may be some things in there that are probably not a big deal among those 130, but overall, um, it does list perch, walleye, and lake trout as commercially harvestable species. And that was sort of one of our um, poison pills, if you will, yeah. uh, that would yeah. uh, not allow us to support the package. You, you've said all along that, that that alone is a deal breaker. Yeah, it really is. Um, you know, there there were some things that we can do. I think we can work on some of the penalties and violations there's some things about net tending that the industry would like to see a little more flexibility on and i think given some time we can keep having those conversations but um at this point you know the 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 game fish issue is we've been very clear from the beginning on where we would stand on that I realize you have to be a little bit careful in what you say because you have to work with those people in Lansing, but it seems to me that senator has been dragging his feet for a long time. Well, there's been a lot of things going on in 2020, so I, I, can't, I can't say it's all his fault. But certainly, if we would have had this package of amendments in July, 
um, we could have had a little bit more of a, you know, back and forth conversation about them rather than getting them, you know, on a holiday weekend here in Lame Duck when we probably only have about two weeks left of uh, legislative activity, if that. So if um, nothing so gets... So it, it's, it's, a, it's a bummer because, you know, we're running out the clock at this point, um, and uh, we really want to see the House Pass versions um, make it to the governor's desk. So if nothing gets passed here in the next two weeks, it's, is, it, is it literally back to square one and you have to start all over again, or can you build on what's been done so far? Um, well, certainly uh, we we would uh, love to see the House Pass versions reintroduced next session. Um, but, yeah, it, basically, and it will have to go through the whole process if nothing is uh, passed and signed into law yet here in December. <laughs> um, so, yes, we would have to go back through the whole process of bill introduction, moving it from the House through the committees over to the Senate, um, all of that. So, yeah. Um, Obviously, our our ideal scenario is to get those House Pass versions through the Senate, um, and uh, in in the nick of time here, um, we hope that you know we, there there is some opportunity here to um, bring the industry back to the table because there were some other administrative changes. That Amy, Amy, I, Amy, did. I am I am so sorry. We are absolutely out of time, but I'm glad you guys are working on this at MUCC because it would frustrate me to no end. So I'm glad that MUCC is keeping an eye on this. MUCC.org. Amy Trotter, Executive Director. Thank you. Ask Avery after the break. Security Credit Union wants to thank you for helping to make them one of Michigan's fastest growing credit unions. Check out Security's Debit Rewards Program, where you can earn points just by using your debit or titanium rewards credit card. Redeem those points for great gifts and merchandise. Or how about the Save to Win account? That's a Security Credit Union account that gives you all the benefits of a traditional savings account, plus the chance to win big. Every $25 you deposit into this share certificate earns you an entry into the monthly and quarterly drawings. The more you save, the more chances to earn, up to 10 entries per month. You'll build up your savings, earn interest and dividends, and have a chance at multiple prizes. And remember, Security Credit Union loves to work with outdoors men and women, and they can help you with your next outdoor adventure. Check them out online at securitycu.org. That's securitycu.org federally insured by the NCUA. Have you tried the Mike Avery Hunter Sticks from Michigan Brand Meats? They feature two of my favorites, elk and pepper, and I think they taste great. I've been working with the Grillo family of Michigan Brand for a few years now, and I couldn't be happier. Michigan Brand is family-owned and based right here in Michigan, and they make lots of great products. From jerky, sausage, and those hunter sticks to their famous Michigan brand hams, you can't go wrong with Michigan brand meats. Plus, Michigan brand can process your boned out wild game too. Check out the website michiganbrand.net for more info. That's michiganbrand.net. You can buy the Mike Avery hunter sticks on that website. Plus, you can get them at Jay Sporting Goods, all forward convenience stores, Jack's Fruit Markets, and many other great stores too. There's a complete list on the website again. That's michiganbrand.net for the Mike Avery hunter sticks, the outstanding Michigan brand hams, and lots more. MichiganBrand.net. It's a complicated world we live in. Right about now, I'll bet your head is spinning like a tornado with news and opinions and conflicting do this and don't do that recommendations. Some days you just want to throw up your hands, go to the woods and stay there. And you know, that's not a bad idea. Jay Sporting Goods encourages you to get back to your roots. Do some simple, traditional things for a while. In Michigan's great outdoors, space is one thing we have plenty of. So put as much social distance as you like between you and everyone else, including all your social media pals who somehow just recently became experts on every topic. And one more thing, before you head out, head into Jay's Sporting Goods. Because even though there are shortages of a lot of things these days, Jay's has just what you need to make the most of your escape to our beautiful wide open spaces. It's the gateway to social distancing the way God intended. Jay's Sporting Goods, Claire and Gaylord. 
It's time to think about your pig. You know, the propane tank in your backyard that heats your home. Well, there's no better company to fill your pig than Forward Energy, covering over 20 counties. Forward Energy is a family-owned and operated propane supplier that's fueled area homes, farms, businesses, and hunters and anglers since 1925. Fill your pig this year. Visit forwardenergy.com to find out about new customer pricing and programs. With Forward Energy. When you buy a Michigan hunting or fishing license, you're helping to fund conservation efforts across the state. The majority of funding for taking care of Michigan's fish and wildlife comes from you, hunters and anglers, not state taxes. So on behalf of the Michigan Wildlife Council, we'd like to thank you for your part in ensuring that Michigan's hunting and fishing heritage will be here for generations. Learn how the Michigan Wildlife Council promotes the role of hunting and fishing at hereformioutdoors.org. You can hear the Outdoor Magazine show in Houghton Lake on the Twister 92.1 WTWS. You can hear us in Holland on two stations, WHTC, AM and FM, 1450 AM, 99.7 FM. And you can hear us, let's see, where can we go? Oh, let's go north of the bridge. Let's go to Newberry, WNBY, 1450 AM. The Ask Avery segment is brought to you each week by Security Credit Union. Security Credit Union loves to work with outdoorsmen and women and they can help you with your next outdoor adventure. Check them out online at securitycu.org. That's securitycu.org. The way the Ask Avery segment works is you can pose a question to me, something you want me to answer directly or something you want me to uh, pass along to uh, somebody else. This week's question is from several people over the last couple of months. They say, Avery, what's the status of your quest to get the powers that be to eliminate the restriction on the number of rods Great Lakes trolling anglers can use. I think there should be no restriction. Currently, there are, there's a three-rod limit. I think there should be no restriction. I think it's arbitrary. I think it's an arbitrary number that has no biological impact because the resource will be protected by the size limits and the daily creel limits. I, I, I fought this a couple of years ago, fought for this. I went to MUCC, did not get it passed at the state level. Recently, though, I've been in touch with a guy named Tom Andrus. Tom has a, a different spin on this, but I think we're trying to accomplish the same thing. And I wanted to get Tom on the show to talk about his idea and maybe we're going to go from here. So, Tom, welcome to the Outdoor Magazine show. How are you? Just great, Mike. Thanks for uh, thanks for letting me get on the show. I appreciate it. No, I appreciate you uh, getting involved in this. But before we get to the meat of this matter here, you're actually on the water fishing right now, aren't you? Yeah, we're having a beautiful fall day on the Kalamazoo River here, man. It's can't beat it for steelhead or walleye. Steelhead. And how's it going? Uh, three for four so far. <laughs> That's a pretty good morning right there. That's for sure. Yeah, it's a good start for sure. So, Tom, tell me, listen, um, what is your take on this? What, what, is the, what is the angle you want to take on the, uh, the rod restriction issue? Well, uh, I remember that you had said something about the unlimited and you had been working on it. And uh, I'm a board member with Great Lakes Salmon Initiative. And, and the thing that we were, we were trying to come up with, because it was something that our membership's asking for, too. And uh, we were thinking, well, since it has to go through the legislature, we first thought it went through the through the NRC, but uh, found out it went, it has to go through the legislature. We figured if we, we tag some cash onto it, you know, who's going to want to say, what politician is going to want to say no to some money, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, our thought and, and my thought is uh, to have uh, like an additional lines license for people that are uh, on a boat. Uh, it'll allow you to allow, uh, run three lines per person that has this additional license. And the license would cost $26, which would be the same amount as the regular fishing license right now. Um, I'm sure, as you know, as a, as a boat owner, uh, $26 in the grand scheme of, of going fishing all year long and things like that probably isn't that big of an expense. And we figured people would be willing to pay that. And also the legislature and the DNR would, would certainly like the dollars right now, especially with COVID going on and all the costs associated with it. So it would be a... a a stamp for the the boat or a license for the boat or what? 
it would be a license for the individual. So the individual would carry the license, and if they want it, they went on another boat, they would carry that license with them, and they could they could fish three additional rods on another boat, or you could fish three additional rods on your boat. So it goes with the person, not the boat. So basically, you're paying for the opportunity to run six rods instead of three. Correct. That's exactly what we're talking about. Now, I find this very interesting because it accomplishes one of my goals, which is to get to allow us to run more rods. Um, I can see, though, that people are going to gripe about the price. Why should I have to pay to do this? Why should I have to pay for the privilege of doing this? But, but as you say, maybe it's a way to kind of get around the, the politics of it all and say, hey, here's a way to make some money. For sure. That's our hope. And, and, and you know, honestly, I, I, don't, I don't know what the proper number is, but it just seemed like uh, $26 was an easy one for everyone. I mean, that's the cost of a license right now. Uh, it'd be something that's obviously we have to explain things, uh, you know, at a, at a primary level to politicians that might not be hunters or fishermen and, uh, you know, making it, keeping the KISS principle going. Sure. I think it works sure. well, you know. So would this be Great Lakes trolling angl- anglers only? That's that's where we're shooting for. It, and again, it, it, if it's something that we get a lot of uh, a lot of draw for regular lakes, I know uh, pan fishermen in the south where unlimited line spider rigging, is a pretty yeah. regular thing, right? Yep, yep. You know they, and uh, so that's a that's so maybe uh, inland fishermen would want to get on on. I I just know that the shore fishermen. And it's not against shore fishermen. I mean we're we're all shore fishermen, but I know that's always been a big issue is right. how many lines do you want on a pier how many lines do you want on a section of bank or an ice fisherman yep yep exactly and so uh i i think uh you know limiting it to boats is going to be a, a better way an easier way to get it passed than and have the least amount of uh you know pushback so well tom i find this uh very interesting it's 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 and I appreciate you coming up with this option. It's something I can get behind. I, I like the fact that your group is behind it as well, because I was kind of a lone voice in the wilderness out there before. But the more people we can get involved, I'm all in favor of this. Let's you and I stay in touch. Let's continue to communicate. And we'll use the radio show as a way to get the word out. Tom Andrus, I appreciate that uh, very much. If you have any thoughts on this, folks, let me know. Mike at MikeEveryOutdoors.com. And again, thank you to the folks at Security Credit Union for making this week's Ask Avery segment possible. We'll take a break. When we come back in hour number three, Dave Rose and Dave Miner right here on Outdoor Magazine.